How you doing, everybody doing? Uh, this is one of my first video blogs. I haven't been one in a while since uh, actually uh, blogging my Brown when I won a uh, Best Culture blog. I've been saying I was going to do one of these and get more consistent with doing video blogs. It ain't happened. So, but let's go get right into it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Trayvon, Mar Trayvon Martin situation. Um, I was going to initially write something about the situation, but I felt like more the message and where I feel and what I'm conveying is to be better for y'all to hear. Um, first off, um, it's not surprising uh, that something like that has happened in America in 2012. Um, we're living in the Obama effect, as many people may or may not know or realize that racial tension has went up since Obama's gotten office. Um, I think it's shown a lot of undercover ignorance and things within our country that, you know, that was saying that we were post-racial and different epithets that people have said um, over time. Um, but going into the uh, Trayvon Martin situation, if you don't know, um, it's been going on for the last week and a half, two weeks or so, but Trayvon Martin was a young brother, 17, that was killed, um, brutally murdered in an Orlando suburb. Um, he was going to get some Skittles and an Arizona iced tea. Um, he was walking home and a Mark Zimmerman, Greg Zimmerman, sorry about that, Greg Zimmerman uh, confronted him because he looked suspicious. Um, those, this suspicion thing is always very, very, very close to me. Um, I'm going to go into a story, it was a very, very personal story of mine that happened to me when I was uh, 12 years old. It was a snow day of school and I had decided, I was a, just always, anybody knows me knows I'm like a book nerdish type of guy and I was going to the library. I walked to the library in the snow. I was like, you know what? I ain't doing nothing at home. Uh, I was home by myself. I'm going to walk to the library. So I walked to the library and I get there and everybody knows me there. It's like cheers. It was like that. The library is like my cheers. And I get there, you know, I hung out for a little bit, checked out a couple of books, had my backpack. So I proceed to walk home. I got no more than a block. Maybe the library is maybe about six blocks, seven blocks away. I didn't get no more than a block or two from the library, I get, uh, the police just cornered me. Just cornered me. They said I look suspicious. Then he's like, oh, what do, you, what do you got in your bag? And I was like, books. He's like, oh, really? Looking at me like, oh, really? You got books? And I was like, yeah. So they grabbed me, grabbed my bag, threw, grabbed my bag from me, went through my bag, and he was really looking for something. Like, I had some bricks. Like, I'm 12 years old. I got bricks. For real like that. Even though I understand, you know, the wire, you know, hoppers and things like that, and, you know, you do want to have a younger person uh, toting your drugs, but really, like, there was no probable cause of anything or anything I was doing. I was just walking my happy ass in the snow back home. So, you know, they, they basically looked at each other. It was two, two, uh, two, two Caucasian uh, cops. Then they look at each other like, damn. So, funny part about it is they felt so bad about it, I think. They gave him a ride home. <laughs> They gave me a ride home all the way back. So, and I never, that never, ever, 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 ever did I forget that, that happening because they made one, I mean, of course, I've always knew, my uncle always instilled in me knowing that I'm still a black man in America. Even at a young age, he instilled that into me. But that was one of the first moments it was like, yo, you are born suspect. Uh, Chris Rock has a, uh, his first comedy, he's called Born a Suspect. Same principles. But Reland is back to, the Trayvon Bryan situation, um, it seems like in America that the only brother that isn't as suspicious is a brother in a suit. And then there's a whole other dynamic if he has a suit on, you know, what, what where, where America looks at him and breaks down his dynamic and his social being and who he is. Um, but with the Trayvon Martin incident, it's getting more and more that we as people, black, white, whoever, have to start being about something else besides the bullshit. Let's keep it real. Um, there's more people that look to the game to come back on and sign petitions and send emails to people talking about, I want the game back on, I want the game back on, than people are making awareness about the situation of Trayvon Martin. There's more people mad when MASH was canceled. Or Cheers. Or even Family Guy, and I love Family Guy, but it was. But let's just keep it real. We talking about a man's life, though, that, and in the situation of Trayvon Bryan, it makes it even more 
the case, it doesn't that even, you have to even, they can even arraign this man. They haven't arrested him. He can be out on bail if he wanted to, yo, let the criminal justice system take care of itself, but he hasn't been arrested or arraigned at all. The court should be able to say, yo, this is self-defense or not. That's the claim he's saying that it was self-defense. So that should be the courts to say that, not the police discretion on them, especially when there's a death involved. I'm not going to get into the dynamic of if it was a black man, uh, the opposite thing like that. Uh, I, I, we know that as black people that there's a possibility, but I also live in a thing of if, if it's a split, we all be high. And what that means is I can you can only go into ifs and different uh, kamikazes uh, and ways you think of things only so much because you can only just say what if. What if means nothing, though, because you're only going on what happened now. Um, but with that being said, though, we have to be more forthright with what we are going to do when about helping our situations, period. There's a war going on of our minds, our hearts, our spirits, and it's always been there, but it's way more direct and coming at us now because we have media and different things. We have no excuses not to being involved with everything. Um, and especially as a black man, I feel that I have to be more forthright myself and maybe I'm even slipping. Even though I feel with even with the blog from Ashley Classy and you know with the radio show and different things that we we have done, that I can still do more. So you know what I did? I called up the state rep for the state of uh, uh, Florida. I actually all the information gonna be below y'all right here. I tweeted them. I'm tweeting them this video. I'm, I hit up I hit up the uh, the, the sheriff. Uh, Bill uh, Greer, I think his name is. I have it written down. I think it's Bill. Bill Davis. Um, I hit him up. I'm hitting them up with all this stuff. All this stuff is on Twitter. I'm gonna have all the information here. And if you're on my blog, you can see that information below you as well. YouTube, you can see it below you as well. And just just, just the little things like that though can mean a more a, a lot. Because if it, if it wasn't for new media and social media, no one would have gave a fuck about this boy. Let's just keep it real. And. When is America going to stand up for the people that it's supposed to stand up for? And I'm not talking about the government. I'm talking about us as a people, though. When are we going to stand up and say, we can't let this shit happen? It's not even just a black thing. This is a humanistic thing at this point. This ain't just about black. This ain't about brown. This ain't about white. This is about human beings standing up for something more than the bullshit. Um, with that being said, just one more thing I want to touch on and relate to it, relaying to this, is what is the definition of a black man in America right now? And I want to leave y'all with that and make y'all really think about that. And that's for white people. Like I said, once this is for anybody to think about what is the definition of a black man in America now? And what is that saying about black children? What is that saying about not just black children, a child? Who's a suspect? Am I a suspect? 